Hey, I'm Corey. If you watched last week, then you will know that I'm currently on the longest road trip I have ever been on. I think I'm just excited for today. This week, I will be traveling through Michigan and Canada while spending time on an alpaca farm and checking out Niagara Falls. Follow along as I make my way through 10 states and Canada. Well, I'm finally in Canada. Tomorrow, I'm crossing over into Canada. However, I need a place to stay tonight, and it looks like I'm staying at an alpaca farm. I stopped at a grocery store, and I'm gonna sit here for a few hours and get some editing done for my video going up tomorrow. I don't think this place that I'm sleeping at tonight, I don't think is very far from here. So I'm just gonna sit here and get some work done and then drive over there a little bit later. Okay, so I decided to wait to walk around until I met the host. I wanted to make sure I was, one, allowed to, because this is her property, <laughs> and two, I wanted to make sure that I didn't go into anybody else's property or into any place that she wouldn't want me to go. So she showed me everywhere I can walk, so I want to go check this place out. She is the nicest lady. This place is called Rejuven Acres. If you're ever in Michigan and need a place to stay, I'll put her contact information down below in the description. Oh, and I thought, so this is an alpaca farm, and I thought I was just gonna be able to come out here and just see the alpacas, but she invited me to feed the alpacas in the morning. So I'm gonna get up early and meet her at 7.30 tomorrow morning and go for the alpaca feeding. That's pretty cool. One of the main reasons why I signed up for Harvest Toast, so I could come out here and check out different places like this. This is awesome. She said she has 23 acres out here would love to live in a place like this. <laughs> it's so peaceful out here. She also mentioned that she runs a bed and breakfast, I believe. I think she said that this is the pen that the alpacas are normally in. However, she said that the bugs get to them really bad, so that they're probably in the barn if they're not back here. Well, if they're not back here, they are in the barn. And I don't see them. But that's okay. Tomorrow morning I'm going to the feeding of them, so I'll get to see them then. So I think now I'm just going to head back to my van, fix me something to eat, and relax for the rest of the evening. Good morning, everybody. This was probably the most peaceful, relaxing sleep I've gotten in a long time. It is very quiet out here, and it's just, it's just nice. I love it out here. I'm about to go meet up with the host and feed the alpacas, so I'm very excited about that. But I wanted to come out here and film the pond real quick because it's, it's pretty neat looking.
All right, so I just left the farm and now I'm headed up to Canada. I just filled up on gas, got my cameras ready, so I'm gonna film me crossing the border. Obviously, I've made it very clear that I've never done this before, so I'm anxious to see exactly how this goes. <laughs> Thank you. Ooh, it's chilly up here. I just rolled down my window and realized that it's only 65 degrees. Okay, well, they didn't check anything at that checkpoint. I just paid, so I suppose that I'm gonna have to show my passport and everything up here. So I'm crossing the river into Canada right now. Oh, this makes me nervous. And I don't know why. Got my passport ready. Well, I just saw another van. It looked like a, I don't know if it's a converted van or not, but it looked like it went through with no problems. <laughs> I should have definitely gotten this other lane over here to my left. It's going a lot faster. Oh, hi. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Very well. And where do you live? Oklahoma. Alright, and how long will you be in Canada for? Just for tonight. Alright, and what's the purpose of the trip? I'm traveling through over to New York. Um, and what's the purpose for staying in Canada? I'm just traveling through. Gotcha. So you've just been driving up and you might stay here for a bit and then you're going to go to New York? Yeah. What's going on in New York? Uh, Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls? Mm -hmm. You're just trying to sightsee there? Yeah. And why would you sightsee in the Canadian side? Um, I I will, but I'm just I don't, on a time limit right now. Gotcha. I'm meeting my brother in Virginia later on. Okay. So. Awesome. Uh, any uh, alcohol, tobacco, or anything? Uh, no. no. Okay. Any firearms or weapons? No. Uh, I will repeat it just because I know in the South it's very common to have a firearm. Not a big deal at all. Mm -hmm. um, but it's better just to declare it now than to go yeah. the consequences later. Do you have a firearm in the car? Nope, no? nothing. And what do you have to meet your brother for in Virginia? We're on vacation. You're on vacation? Mm -hmm. Give me one moment, okay? Okay, no problem. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. to make it very clear that um, to make sure I didn't have a firearm <laughs> with me. I don't have a firearm. Okay, I need to turn on international roaming. Okay. Hopefully my GPS don't cut out on me. Well, I'm finally in Canada. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I was way more nervous than I needed to be. <laughs> okay, now... The speed is in kilometers. This is so cool. I've never been to Canada before. And I've never driven across... I've never driven into Mexico or anything. So, this is the first time go right around me. I'm not speeding in another country. Sorry. Go right on around. So I'm staying in another farm tonight. Um, well, hope maybe. it's The request is still pending. Hopefully they approve it soon so I can just go straight there. But I've also got, my dad wanted me to grab him some Canadian beer. So I'll be on the hunt for that as well. But that border crossing guy asked me if I had any alcohol. I wonder if I can get, I wonder if I can cross back into the U.S. with alcohol. I guess we'll find out. Hey everybody, Corey from the future here. I just wanted to jump on here real quick. 
I'm editing this video right now, and I just realized I never gave you all an update <laughs> if we're able to bring alcohol into the U.S. or not from Canada. So, yes, you can bring alcohol, but you can only bring up to one liter. Basically, two large cans is the limit. It's right under a liter, but three cans would have been over the limit. Instead of getting a six-pack like I wanted to, I was only able to get the two cans, but at least it's something. All right, back to the video. Good morning, everybody. So last night I didn't do any filming. I put in a harvest host request for another farm last night. However, they didn't respond, which was okay. I had some editing I needed to do anyway last night, so it really would have been hard for me to sit in my van and edit being at a farm when I can get out and look at things. So I just booked a campground and it was a pretty basic campground. So I really wasn't missing out on anything by staying in my van and working. So this morning I got up and around and stopped at a Flying J and took a shower, which was nice. <laughs> and now I'm on my way to Niagara Falls. Currently I'm about 25 minutes away. However, I think I found a store that I can go ahead and pick up something for my dad. So I'm gonna stop in there real quick and then I'll make my way on into Niagara Falls. What I'm going to do first is check out the Canadian side of the falls and then I will come back to my van and make my way over to the U.S. side and then probably check out the U.S. side tomorrow. Okay, so I've made it to Niagara Falls and I was a little worried that I wasn't going to be able to get any, um, I wasn't going to be able to find a parking spot because there's a lot of people here. However, if you just keep going down past the falls, there's a pretty large parking lot and there's quite a few spots left open so I was able to find one. You can see the falls from the road. They look incredible. All, I, just the little bit that I've seen, crazy. <laughs> so I'm very excited to get out and check this out. So this will be the Canadian side of Niagara Falls. So glad I decided to come check this out because this is incredible. I'm gonna try to do that tomorrow. I think it's called the Maid of the Mist, so I'm gonna see if I can book that. Someone told me that the Canadian side was better, and from what I can see, I agree with them. <laughs> so on this one, the large falls is called American Falls. And then the small one over to the side is called Bridal Veil Falls. Check out this tree. I walked past it earlier whenever I was walking to the falls. I'm walking back to my van now, but I didn't notice you could walk into it. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. So last night I drove probably about 20 minutes away from Niagara Falls to this Cracker Barrel and parked in the parking lot for the night. That's one good thing about not being able to find a place to park. If you can find a Cracker Barrel, at least you can fall back on that. It was me and then there was another van on the other side of the parking lot from me and had a very uneventful night. No one bothered me and 
even though the highway is right there i think because i have my roof fan on back there it creates a lot of white noise it blocks out most of the sounds from traffic so i slept really good but today i'm heading back to niagara falls on the u.s side yesterday i booked um, a trip on the maid of the mist which is the boat ride that goes to the bottom of the horseshoe falls so i'm excited to check that out today and then i think I'm not in a big hurry today. It feel, I feel like I've been in a hurry this entire trip. And I think I'm getting to the point on this trip where I can start slowing down a little bit. I'm going to be traveling to the central part of New York today, um, which is about only about a two and a half hour drive. But I can't check into my campground until three. So I'm just going to hang out, explore more of Niagara Falls on the U.S. side, and just take my time today. I think I'm going to wait and do the boat ride a little bit later. <laughs> It, you get wet on it and it's a little chilly right now so I'm gonna let it warm up a little bit. <laughs> say about the American side though is it's very beautiful over here you may not get as good of a view however you can get right up to the falls on this side and the scenery around here is it's amazing So yesterday I was curious if anybody had ever gone over the falls and survived it. So what I read was thousands of people have gone over, but only like, I can't remember the exact number, it was something like 16 people. Only 16 people have survived it. And the falls that we were just at, the Bridal Veil Falls and the American Falls, no one that's gone over that one made it. The, the few that have made it over the falls, were over the Horseshoe Falls. And one was a teacher back in 1901, and she went over in an oak barrel. <laughs> Crazy. And she survived it. And then in 1951, a daredevil, I can't remember his name, I'll pop it up on the screen. Um, he went over on the falls and didn't make it. And then that's when Canada and the US made it illegal to pull a stunt like that. So now you can be fined quite a bit if you attempt to go over the falls. Okay, we may have a pretty good view of the Horseshoe Falls from up here on this side. anybody could survive that that's but when you think about thousands have gone over and only like 16 have survived that tells you something it's crazy now I think I'm gonna make my way over to made of the mist boat ride and experience that 
it's still a little chilly out, but it's warmed up a little bit. It's probably not gonna get much warmer than this, so I'll go ahead and try it out. got back to my van and got some dry clothes on. They should rename that from Made of the Mist to Made of the Rainstorm. Some people got soaked and some people were that were even standing near me were looked completely dry. I guess the people that got soaked, including me, didn't know how to work those rain ponchos very well. <laughs> uh, I just I gave up on the hood. I should have tightened it down and tied it before I even before we even got there, but oh well, maybe next time. But I think that's where I'm gonna end this week's video. I've been seeing that due to some wildfires up in Canada, parts of New York are really getting a lot of smoke. Where I'm at right here in Western New York, it's fine. It's a little hazy, but nothing crazy. However, I looked at the map and where I'm gonna be camping tonight and tomorrow night, it's gonna be a little bit interesting. So I'll be sure to keep you all updated in the next video. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it, and I will see you next Tuesday.